day, everyone. In this video, I'm going to explain STPM physics, semester two, chapter one, which is about electrostatics. So the first thing that we are going to look into is about the Coulomb's law. So at the end of this video, a student should be able to start Coulomb's law and also use the formula. So first is about the definitions. So Coulomb's law said that the force between two point charge is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to square of their separation distance. So next, uh, we're going to revise about Newton turn off motions that every action, there's a reaction force of equal magnitude but in the opposite directions. So in this topic that we are going to study about the electrostatic force that exerted on the charges. So the first case that we have is the unlike charges that uh, we have uh, one positive and one negative charge. So the positive charge will be attracted toward the negative charge that the direction is to the right. And then the negative charge is actually also experiencing an attraction force that is equal magnitude, but in the opposite directions. So in the end, both the charges are attracted toward each other and move to the center. So the next case that we have is the like charges. So example that uh, we have both uh, positive charge or maybe negative charge. So you could expect that the positive charge on the left will be repelled by the positive charge on the right to the left. And it also happened the same to the positive charge on the right that it was also experiencing a repulsion force of equal magnitude but in the opposite directions. So this is how we explain how we relate the Newton third law of motions into the electrostatic force that we are going to look into deeper in this topic. So the next thing is about the permittivity. So the definition is the ability of a material to concentrate electrostatic lines flux. So in simple words, it means that how much the medium permit the electric field line to pass through. So the permittivity of the medium is the epsilon, which even the formula of epsilon zero multiplied the relative of permittivity. So epsilon zero is the permittivity of free space that the value given is 10.85 multiplied 10 to the power of negative 12 power per meter. So to find the permittivity of the medium, so first we need to have the relative permittivity, epsilon r. So for example, that uh, for the permittivity of A, which is equal to 1.005, to obtain the actual permittivity of A, so what we do is we multiply the relative permittivity 1.005 with the epsilon zero. In most of the cases uh, that we would approximate the permittivity of A into the permittivity of free space. So next, uh, we're going to look into the formula, so which is the electrostatic force equal to the constant K multiplied Q1, Q2 divided by R squared, which according to the definitions of Coulomb's law. So the K here is actually equal to the 1 over 4 pi epsilon. So Q1, Q2 are the charges which measure in Coulomb, and then the R is the distant in the So next, uh, we're going to look into some example. So we have a simple uh, example here that uh, we have two positive charge of two micro coulomb. So they are separated by four meter and both of them are in the medium of A. So to find out what is the force experienced by point charge A, so what we do is we apply the formula of Coulomb's law. We substitute all the value given, and then you will get the answer of uh, positive 2.25 multiplied 10 to the negative 3 Newton. So you can not take note that the value of the electrostatic is the positive value. So what you can see is that the point charge A is actually experiencing repulsion force. The X point charge A is repelled by the point charge B. In another way, we also could expect that point charge B 
is also experiencing the same uh, repulsion force from the point charge A, which is equal to 2.25 multiplied 10 of negative 3 Newton, and also the direction is to the right. So this is what happened to both positive charge. So next, we're going to look into a more complex versions that I'm now going to add the third point charge, which is C, point charge C here, that is three meters away from point charge A at the top. So to solve this kind of questions, so the first thing that we do is we calculate the force exerted by each other charge individually. So example that, the point charge B, that what we did just now is, we know that the point charge B will push point charge A to the left. While the point charge C, since it is the same charge as point charge A, so you could ex expect that the point charge C would exert a repulsion force on point charge A. So from here, we could find out the magnitude of the force using the Coulomb's law as what we have did in the previous exercise. So to do this, so we just calculate the electrostatic force using the Coulomb's law. So first of all, that uh, from point charge B, we could see there's a 2.25 times 10 to the 3 Newton to the left. And for the point charge C, I will leave that to you to calculate it. And the answer would be 4 times 10 to the negative 3 Newton. So after we get all the forces, the next thing that we can do is we calculate the resultant force, which we have learned in the experiment physics. So to calculate the resultant force, so what we do is we rearrange the forces using the triangle solutions. So first what we get is the, the forces to the left, which is 2.25 millinewton, and then the downward force, 4 millinewton. So to get the resultant force, we apply the skew that you have learned before. So first of all, about the magnitude. So what we do is we apply the Pythagoras theorem to obtain the, the value. So which is 4.59 times 10 to the power of negative three Newton. So next for the direction. So in this case, I will use the bearing system. So to get the bearing, so what we do is we need to calculate the, the angle of uh, this point. And then we apply the formula of 270 degree minus the, the theta. So by using the tangent, and then you will get the value is 209.4 degree. In short, to solve the question related to electrostatic force, so the first thing that you need to do is you need to determine all the forces exerted by each other charges individually using the Coulomb's law. So please bear in mind that you need to know what is the directions that is depending on the charges. Either they are like charges or they are unlike charges. So after you get all the forces, so the next thing is you apply the same thing that you have learned before, calculate the resultant force. So you may need to revise the resolution of forces that you can resolve the forces into the horizontal and the vertical components. And then you combine all the forces and then what you do is you calculate the magnitude using the Pythagoras theorem that what I have did just now. And then the direction which you can use the trigonometry. So that's all from me in this lesson. So thank you.